Hello, it's Happy. Hello. I'm very pleased to see that you've come for this interview. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you'd turn up when I um, when I asked you to come for it, mm -hmm. but people have been asking, and we thought it's a good idea to do. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to ask you quite a few questions, mostly about your lifestyle, mm -hmm. but in particular about your work now, okay. past and present. All right. Mm -hmm. So my first question is, how did you get into optometry? It was actually through clearing on UCAS. So I'm just going to make some notes on this as well. So, um, I think it was about 2006. I was on the UCAS website on the clearing stage of things and optometry popped up. Right. I couldn't, I couldn't get into what I wanted to do, which was pharmacy, after a few changes to things leading up to that point, I landed on pharmacy. I wasn't accepted and then I had a look on UCAS and optometry popped up and I took a chance on it. And you've not looked back since? No, it's been brilliant. I think actually I'd be prefer, prefer to do what I'm doing now instead of pharmacy. Right. Well, it's clear to see that you are very good at what you do. Thank you. All right. Now, my next question is, where did you study for your optometry? I studied at Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge. So it's, it's a small little university, but actually located in Cambridge Town Centre, just next to uh, Parker's Peace, I believe. Oh. So you was able to ride a bicycle then? I did do a bit of cycling to <laughs> into work, the town yeah. centre. Yeah. Right. And what year was this? Well, I started in 2006. It was a three-year course. Um, there was no slip-ups during the course, so I did graduate in 2009. Right. Where did you go for your graduation? I think it's called the Guild Hall in Cambridge, but don't quote me on that. It was in Cambridge Town Centre. And I think we've already answered this one. Um, did you always want to be an optometrist? No. So right. I think first it was dentist, and then it became doctor, then it became pharmacist, and then it accidentally became optometry. I would say I had unrealistic goals of wanting to be a footballer or a cricketer, but I just wasn't quite good enough. Right. I think a lot of the children, a lot of the lads, have them sort of. And it used to be that it was a lot of the lads. Now it's the females are just as much into that as well, aren't they? Yeah, it's growing in popularity. And if it? anything, I would say there's more females want to play football now mm. than there are lads. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a good thing, yeah. Tell me about your work in history prior to becoming an optometrist. Have you done any other work? Well, when I was a teenager, I reckon 16, 17, that time I started to work a Sunday job with my granddad, who was a chef. So on Sundays I used to go and spend, I'd say I'd start at 11 and finish around five or six. I'd do a good six or seven hours in the kitchen. Um, but he actually gave me the responsibility of doing the starters and the desserts. Mm. So he gave me a bit of responsi responsibility. Well, yeah, the pastry chef is a very good job. So I'd do, I'd do things like I'd prepare the prawn cocktails or the pâté. Yeah. And then I'd do, the, obviously, the, the desserts as well. Right. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, just to add, I also did a bit of market research as well in my late teens. Right. So I did some mystery shopping. Ah, so what sort of mystery shopping? Well, I used to visit the Weatherspoon pubs around the Midlands. Yeah, that's a I'd job I wouldn't mind having. Well, I used to go to <laughs> Wensfield. Canuck, uh, Litchfield, Warsaw, and just mystery shop, food visits, drinks visits. Right. Well, 
What's the best part about your job? Obviously helping people in need with optometry. If someone's in a desperate situation and they're looking for answers and it's nice when you can actually point them in the right direction, give them honest advice and you help them at their sight. Yeah, whether it's a referral for a cataract operation or new glasses, just being there to, to help people with their sight. Right. And now, of course, you're a YouTuber. Do you enjoy it? I do enjoy it, yeah. Yeah, it's been... It has been life-changing, really. It's been five years now since I've been going with the main channel. I think it's just over one year with the gaming channel. So, um, I keep at it. Do you see yourself doing YouTube full-time? But it depends whether full time means giving up your normal optometry job. Um, I think one day possibly I might do it full time, but you could argue that I am doing it full time anyway with the amount of hours that go into it. Right, yeah. And you have a second YouTube channel, SRP Game Over. Mm. Tell me about that, please. Just bringing ASMR into the gaming domain. So I'm picking some of my favourite games um, and just doing like a commentary, a soft spoken way, similar to how I do the videos on the normal channel. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's sort of a nostalgic thing as well for myself and the viewers where we can combine gaming with ASMR. You're an ASMR artist. Do you experience ASMR yourself? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it was much stronger when I was younger. Uh, I'd like to think I understand ASMR because I feel it. Um, so when it comes to my videos, I try and do triggers or styles of videos that would give me ASMR. And that's all I've really done. Just, just trying to do what works for me and not, not trying to force anything or introduce unnatural or sounds that are not meant to be there so unnatural things right and that's my style really yeah what was your earliest experience of ASMR when I was very young and my granddad used to come over, we used to actually play doctors and dentists together. And obviously I didn't know what it was in terms of defining ASMR, I just knew it, it was a strong feeling at the back of the head, the neck. And um, <coughs> we just, it was just from there really. And then eventually, I think in my early thirties, found out that it's actually a thing, a scientific thing, which is mind-blowing. Hmm. And now you're doing it. Yeah. And what does the future hold for ASMR? I think it's only going to get bigger. It's going to, it's already on a, you know, positive trajectory. I think more people are finding it. And you, you notice the amount of young people watch ASMR. You know, teens on TikTok, YouTube. You know, on YouTube as well. You know, they're they're pretty. They know what it is, whereas we didn't. They know it's a thing. Do you think that the COVID has helped with the ASMR overall? I for think viewers so. Viewers and everything. In in a few senses, yes. One because people um, were housebound. You know, a lot of people had to stay at home, a lot of people were on furlough. So they turned to things to probably help with the mental health. Or yep. they might have been just a little bit bored and accidentally stumbled upon ASMR. Or people who already watched ASMR, I think that it may have increased their 
uh, viewership of ASMR. I think it just, and from that point, um, people have cottoned on and I think it's, it's going to explode. Yeah. Right. Are there any ASMR artists who you enjoy watching or have inspired you? The main one when I first started who inspired me before I ever made a video was Dr. T, Dr. Tinglebottom. And he's one of my favourites of all time. I particularly remember finding his cranial nerve exam videos. And it was some of the best ASMR that I've ever experienced. So I think Dr. T, I was aware of GB as well at the time. She was good and very inspirational with what she was doing and how she grew herself. And, and who was that again, sorry? GB, G-I-B-I, -I, ASMR. But Dr. T, I think, was... He was popular. your best. He was my favourite. Yeah. Right. Anybody else, or was, was it really them two that... I think you? Maria, gentle, gentle whispers. She's very good, very relaxing. Again, it's, it seems very natural with Maria. She seems to be a really nice person as well. Excellent. Right. I just want to find out a little bit more about you now. Mm. So we're going to do a little of this or that. Right. So what would you prefer, tea or coffee? Coffee slightly more. But I do like tea as well. But you prefer coffee? It depends. I drink more coffee than tea, but I like them both. And do you prefer sparkling or still water? Still. You tip it into another container, it's still water. And do you prefer a shower or a bath? A bath. Um, and a Mac or a PC? A PC. Are you introvert or extrovert? More extrovert. A bit of both, but more extrovert. Probably 70, 30. Hmm. And would you prefer to have money or brains? Both. Which animals do you prefer, dogs or cats? Slightly more dogs, even though I've got two cats. It's the unconditional love with dogs. I have to agree on that one. The cats, uh, you don't have to follow them around to clean up so much, do you? No. And which meal do you prefer, breakfast or dinner? Dinner. And which is your favourite day sat in the weekend, Saturday or Sunday? Had to pick, I'd say Saturday. Despite the fact that you work some Saturdays. Only half a day though. And do you prefer sweet or savoury? That's a tough one. I like both. Probably slightly more savoury. But I've got a very sweet tooth. What about reading or writing? The reading. And Kendrick or Drake? Kendrick. What is it you like about Kendrick? Seems a bit more realer and okay. honest and would you prefer a holiday on a beach or in a forest? Oh, I like both. Probably slightly more the beach, but I do like walks in the, uh, you know, the forest, like kind of chase. And do you prefer to be hot or cold? Hot. Oh gosh, do you prefer Ronaldo or Messi? I think I like Ronaldo a little bit more, but I think 
we have to admit that Messi was the naturally better footballer, but Ronaldo had, has got more strings to his bow. Well, Ronaldo was much more in the limelight, wasn't he? Yeah, it's a bit more of a superstar, I'd say. Yeah. But Messi is a superstar for his, more for his football, maybe. Italian food, do you prefer a pizza or a pasta? Pizza. And would you prefer to go to see a comedy or a drama? A comedy. And if you was given the option, would you have truth or dare? Truth. And which season do you like the best, summer or winter? Summer. Characters, would you prefer a Superman or Batman? Batman. And would you prefer to live in the countryside or the city? Countryside. In the car, would you prefer to be the driver or the passenger? Driver. And would you prefer to dine in or dine out? Dine out. For sweet pudding, would you prefer waffles or pancakes? That's a tough one. They both need to have Nutella on them. Probably lean towards pancakes slightly. It's easier to make the pancakes at home than the waffles yeah. isn't it? But if I order sweet things it's usually a waffle. But if at home if I'm making it it's always a pancake with Nutella. Right. Would you prefer dark or milk chocolate? Milk chocolate. And would you prefer, in your housework, would you prefer to do the mopping or the vacuuming? Vacuuming. Are you an early bird or a night owl? More of a night owl. You knew that before I said it. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> and would, would you like your eggs boiled or fried? Fried. They're mine risottoed. What does that mean? Have you ever had risotto? I've never heard of it. I know what risotto is. It's, yeah, but it's egg, egg risotto. Ah. Oh. I thought it was a certain style of how you prepare it. Would you, for your pudding, would you like an ice cream or a cake? Depends on the cake, but probably ice cream. Would you prefer to give or to receive? Give. I knew that one as well before and before I asked it. And would you prefer to have crisps or chocolate? It's another tough one. Probably crisps. If it's Walker's cheese and onion. Especially if it's that. Yeah. Wins every time. And nuts, do you prefer almonds? Almonds or peanuts? Almonds. And would you prefer Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. And would you prefer to have an e-book or a physical book? A physical book. Mm -hmm. Out of maths and science, which would you prefer? Science. And bodies of water, do you prefer the ocean or a lake? A lake. Or creepy crawlies, do you like spiders or snakes? I think I'm more terrified of spiders, so I'll go with snakes. I'd 
the default winner that one. And salsa or sour cream? Sour cream. Not so spicy is it? No. And would you prefer to do exercises, would you do cardio or weights? I like both. And what would you prefer, money or sex? That's a good one, money. I say, what's sex? <laughs> <laughs> and nice cars, would you prefer a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? A Ferrari. Would you like Eubank or Ben? Eubank. Football teams, Real Madrid or Barcelona? Real Madrid. And Paul Scholes or Gerard? Scholes. I think that's covered everything that I was going to ask. Brilliant. Is there anything you'd like to fill us in with that might help us? Not that I can think of, but I think we'll do this again sometime. All right. And explore things a bit further because it's been enjoyable. I've enjoyed this okay. and I've learnt a lot about you now. Lovely. I'm going to keep all my notes. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.